Hi, I'm going to show you how to make this symmetrical square patch quilt. So uh, this fabric is available from mandalapatch.com. These are patches that are symmetrical across one diagonal axis so that you can rotate them to form uh, mandalas and uh, get different effects. So uh, here are some patches that I've made up already um, using this design that I've worked out. So I'm just going to cut the squares uh, out of the fabric so that I've got four of each and in a 120 patch piece of this fabric you get four of each design. So I've cut them all out and I'm just going to lay them out now as I think I wish them to appear. So this is quite fun to do, you get very different effects even if you just spin the, uh, the pieces by 180 degrees the, the effect will change completely. So I'm just laying out my patches now how I want them to uh, appear in the finished quilt. And uh, for the pieces in the centre, I'm going to sew diagonally across the patches so that I get this uh, half and half effect. So I'm just using an air erasable pen to very clearly mark the diagonal axis that I wish to sew along. And then just quickly run them through the machine. So you can see I've done the, the four of them now for this section I'm working on. So just unpin them and then you can open them out and see what the finished effect is going to be like. There we can see that's what they're going to look like. We're going to cut away the excess of the side that we don't want. And we've got the, the four pieces there for the four centres of the, the sections we're working on. So I'm taking them over to my ironing board now. I'm just going to press them open so they're nice and easy to handle. So I'm just doing all four of them and we'll make up this block all at, at once. So now I've laid my pieces out, I'm just going to mark them with a permanent pen just on the seam allowance there so I know which way up they're meant to go and then pick them up neatly in little piles and take them over to my sewing machine ready to sew together in strips. So these patches have a seam allowance on them that are exactly the right width for the edge of your foot. So if you just run your foot up the edge of these patches you should get your stitches in exactly the right place and they should be nice and accurate when you've, when you've put them together. So there I've done the first strip I'm just going to sew the rest of them together. There's one of the, the centre pieces there. I'll just sew these together into a row as well. So this is really very, very easy, very, very quick to do. If you've never done patchwork before, you don't need to worry. It's, uh, it's fine. It's so simple. The other great thing about these patches is that you don't have to buy hundreds of different materials and loads of different colours because everything you need is included in the fabric that you buy with all of these patches on. So I'm just going to press these little strips now, making sure that uh, the seams are pressed over to a different side. Uh, and what I mean by that is, if the centrepiece, the seams are over to the left, you want the top and the bottom with the seams pressed over to the right. And this will remove bulk when you're um, sewing your pieces together and when you're finally pressing them and putting them together, because you don't want all the bulk in one place. So I'm just pressing them nice and flat now. And then I'm just going to pin them together and run them through the machine again to uh, to bring these pieces together. So you can cut off your little tails so they don't get in the way. So you can see there what I mean about the seams is they're, they're facing in different directions and we want to keep that really just to remove bulk. There we are. So pin them together nice and accurately. And then I can just take it to the machine and run a row of stitches through just like that. So there we are. All I've got to do now is just uh, press that seam open again and repeat with the other piece that I've got there. So you don't need to be too precious about this. You you know, if you've not done it before, you're still going to be okay. So I've cut some fabric here that matches or coordinates with these patches and I've just cut them exactly the same width as one of the patches. So I've cut uh, a few of these strips. So I've pinned it now to the, the square that I've made, machined just along the edge and now I'm going to press that seam open and this is how we're getting the borders around each of these uh, nice symmetrical colourful panels that we're doing. 
So we're going to repeat this exercise again with uh, one of the other sides. So just turn it over and pin it onto your strip. Pin and sew and then press open. Um, and we just leave it done on two sides and then when we bring all the pieces together that's when the final design of the quilt will, will come together and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So there we've stitched that. Just going to press that one open now. There we are. So that's uh, that's one square done. So in the finished quilt, there's uh, a fair few of these, but you just need to work out how many you want to do. There's 120 patches in each of these pieces of fabric. Um, you can see here what I mean by the reason we've only stuck those pieces on, on two sides, because we're now going to stitch them together with their neighbours and that will give us the frame. So you just need to repeat this exercise uh, as many times as you want to to get the size of the quilt top that you want. Um, I've got a six by four block uh, quilt that I've made, which is actually for a wall hanging. Um, the patches are 5.5 centimeters each and you need 10 of them to make each of these little blocks. So in a 120 patch piece, you will have enough to make 10 blocks. Um, I actually used three 120 patch pieces because I wanted to repeat some of the mandalas in, in my design to make it nice and symmetrical. Um, but there's plenty enough. Um, you should really only need a couple of pieces to do a quilt of this size. So here we are. I've now uh, pinned and uh, sewed my blocks together. I'm just pressing them now and you can start to see how this, this whole quilt topper is going to come together. And as I say, we're just going to repeat this exercise until we've got as many as we need to uh, make our quilt top. So here is my uh, quilt top sewed together and laid out. I've got some uh, wadding or batting, I think the Americans call it, um, which is a very lightweight batting and uh, just so, an old piece of curtain lining for the, the backing of this. And I'm just going to pin it at this stage and then get on with the quilting. So when you start quilting you want to start in the middle and work your way out to the edge and that way you don't get any wrinkles. So we're going to now use a uh, just a standard embroidery hoop. This is a 20 centimetre hoop. We're going to use it upside down and I've printed uh, my quilting design onto some uh, dissolvable paper. Uh, so I tried in this experiment three types of dissolvable paper that are on the market none of them were any good. Um, this first uh, piece that I'm using here is just regular tissue paper. So I've printed the design on, I've sandwiched it with my fabric in my hoop and I have a free motion foot on my machine. I've dropped the feed dogs um, and I'm just moving the fabric beneath the needle to get my quilting design. So uh, as I say this is regular tissue paper. Um, this didn't work that well but then neither did any of the other commercially available products either so we'll come on to that later but I just thought I'd uh, try what was out there and see how we got on with it so uh, just with anything that you're using just tear off the excess you can see I've actually quilted up the whole top in that fashion now in between um, on the little grey bits all I've done is uh, little circles so it looks like it's like a pebbly texture and you can see that a little bit more clearly when we examine the back later. So I'm just going to now cut the excess off from all the way around my quilted top. We'll worry about washing this um, stuff out later. So I'm just, uh, as I say, trimming the excess off. I'm going to then have uh, a look at the back so that you can see what it looks like. So there's my trimmed top. And it's come together very nicely with the quilting actually. And uh, you can see how I just did little tiny circles, um, free motion with a free motion foot uh, on the, the grey bits of the quilt. We've got a nice quilted pattern there. Um, when you're doing this, the back can sometimes get a little bit messy because you've got trailing threads and things which just look really untidy. So because it's only a little wall hanging, I'm just going to put a sheet of um, fabric on the back to cover up all of the, the workings on the back. If you're nice and tidy and you want to clear up your stitches and your tails as you go, it's perfectly okay and probably better to leave it without a backing on. So I would have put this nice fabric on before I quilted. 
So I'm just now cutting off the excess and I'm going to uh, run a stitch around the edge um, just to hold these pieces together while I'm doing the bias binding. So I'm just using a zigzag um, and just stitching all the way around just to make sure that I've caught all of these fabrics together. It'll make handling it now a lot easier. So I've got some uh, inch bias binding. You can make your own if you've got enough fabric left over. Um, I find it excessively boring and it's not actually all that expensive to buy. So uh, I'm just going to pin it. If you pin at a 45 degree angle from the edge of your fabric, you'll find that you can just sew without removing the pins. You can just sew straight through them. And this helps you greatly because the pins are actually doing their job all the way through the operation. When you get to a corner, stick a pin in at a 45 degree angle and then just fold the bias back on itself. So you're effectively mitering. Make sure you don't sew through any of the ribbon that you don't want, need to catch, just the very edge you're going to catch there. And that's how we'll deal with the corners. And just go round the entire quilt like this. So um, I'm all the way round to the beginning. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to do a corner again. So stick the pin in at a 45 degree angle, bend the tape, stick another pen in, and then you will just catch the very edge of that corner. So there we are, we're all pinned all the way around now. I've run out of pins, <laughs> pinch one from somewhere else, there we are. So I'm just going to run this through the machine. I'm running the edge of the uh, foot along the edge of the quilt there. I'm just whip all the way around, um, being very careful in the corners not to stitch that flap. We just want to catch the very edge of the bias binding. Leave your needle in when you get to the corner. Lift the stamp of foot and twist your work and then you won't um, lose the stitch line. So I'm just going to continue with that and then remove the pins and you can start to see how tidy it looks on the front face. Um, there we are, we've got no stitches showing on the bias binding. I think that is the nicest and tidiest way to, to deal with the, the binding of a quilt. I don't actually like to see the machine stitched through on the front. It never looks quite tidy enough to me. So I'm just going to pin now on the back and when we get to the, the corner we're just going to poke it about and mitre the corner on the back. There we are, nice and tidy. So pin all the way round um, and then it's just a case of hand stitching around the back of your quilt to get you this beautifully crisp and unadulterated finish on the front. So just a, a normal stab stitch all the way around. So there we are, that's our, our binding all finished and looking beautifully neat. So now I'm going to have a go at washing these dissolvable papers out. So I've used two types of dissolvable paper. One is Solvi um, and it comes in A4 sheets and it's about £12.50, £12.95 for 12 sheets. And it says completely soluble in water. And the other one is Aquatics, which comes in a sheet which is 79 centimetres by 55. Um, so it's not ready to feed through your printer, but you can cut it into little pieces and then you can feed it through your printer quite easily to print your designs on. Um, so I'm actually really disappointed with this stuff because it does wash off. The gross parts of it do wash off really quite easily, but... The bits that are under your stitches get trapped and it clogs up and I ended up having to machine wash this quilt to get most of this material out and it really didn't still come out so if you take a close look at this quilt I'm not too happy with the quilting because it's clogged up with all these paper fibres but you live and you learn and uh, I thought I'd save you some money by including that in the video. Don't buy that stuff, it's rubbish. Um, even see I'm here washing it out by hand that didn't do any good at all I had to put it through on a machine wash which didn't really do the the finished quilt that much good but there we are um, so I am going to try and find a product that is a lot better than this and when I do I will let you know what it is and I will give you a demonstration of it working you can see me there trying to pick the bits out and rub them out and it really doesn't work so there we are, that's our quilt nearly finished. So after a little machine wash um, and uh, letting it dry on a flat surface, uh, I did finish and uh, took the, the, the photograph. 
So you can get these mandala patches from mandalapatch.com. We've got new colours coming in all of the time. So please come along, take a look at the website um, and have a go. It's enormous fun. So there's our beautifully finished uh, wall hanging. Please subscribe to us on YouTube too and you'll get all of our videos as soon as they come out. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have fun with your sewing. Bye bye.